What's up YouTube? Now today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my cookie plates this year for Christmas. And you might be thinking, Matt, it's November. You're crazy. And I'll absolutely agree with you. But today I'll be using some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And this stuff takes 28 days to cure. That way it'll be dishwasher safe on the top rack. So I need to get these cookie plates made and cured. So the things that you're going to need to make these holiday cookie plates are some Mod Podge. Now I'll be using the dishwasher safe stuff like I said, but you can go ahead and just use the regular Mod Podge. It just will not be washable. You can wipe the top of the plate off with a damp towel, but you don't want to get the back wet. You'll need some foam brushes, some rubbing alcohol. Now this is just to clean any fingerprints or grease off of our glass plates. Now of course you're going to need some clear glass plates. I got these at the Dollar Tree. But check your local Goodwills. Mother and I went to one of our favorite Goodwills and they had a stack of clear square plates and I thought those would look just as cute. Unfortunately, I did not pick them up. And you're also going to need some sort of holiday fabric. Now in Omaha we have a store here called Tuesday Mornings. And in their flyer, they had fat quarter bundles on sale for $3.99. I could not pass that up. So I got three. And you can see the different varieties. I have little else with presents. This one just has snowflakes. But my favorite one was this rustic one. It had little mooses, foxes with Santa hats, bears, little Christmas trees. I just thought this was so country and so cute. And you're also going to need some sandpaper. Now this is 150 grit, but you could also just use one of them nail files. That'll work just great. I'll also be using my freezer paper just so I don't make a mess here. So let's get started. Alright guys, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is choose your fabric. For this plate, I think I'm going to use this cute snowman fabric. It has snowflakes, snowman, and Christmas trees. And I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm just going to iron it to make sure any creases or wrinkles are out of it. Next you just want to take one of your plates here and I just put on a piece of freezer paper just so I don't mess up my board here. I've already washed these and got the sticker and any of the sticker residue off of these. So now I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to clean the whole back of this plate to make sure there's no grease or fingerprints or anything like that. And you don't need that much alcohol. So now I'm just going to come back with another piece of dry paper towel and wipe off any of the extra alcohol. Now I'm going to grab my Mod Podge. Now I've never used this before and it smells quite a bit worse than regular Mod Podge. I actually like the smell of regular Mod Podge, but this does have a chemical yeast smell. Now the directions back here say to let this cure for 28 days. That's a long time. Now I have seen online where people cure these in their oven. And to do that, all you would need to do is put this in a cold oven, turn it on to 175 degrees, and bake it for one hour. After that hour is up, you just want to shut off your oven and let it cool down completely in the oven. Now, like I said, this does have a pretty strong odor. And I don't think Mother would like it if I stunk up the whole house with a chemical-y smell. But if you're pressed for time, go ahead and research that more online and don't take my word for it. So now I'm just going to take my foam brush here and I'm going to brush Mod Podge onto my plate. Alright guys, so I have a nice thin layer on here. You just want to make sure that there's no big glops like th this right here. So if you need to, you can go ahead and wipe some of the Mod Podge back off into the jar. And you really want to make sure that you have a good layer around the rim here. So now we're going to take our fabric here and we're going to lay this so the pretty side is facing down in the glue. And before you do that, make sure there's no loose threads or anything like that, because they'll be stuck in there forever. 
So I'm just going to lay it over my plate here. Starting from the middle, I'm just going to start rubbing. Now you want to make sure that it's good and pressed along the edges here. And right here where it's raised up on the plate, just make sure everything's nice and smooth. If you happen to get a wrinkle, it's really easy just to push it out. This fabric is pretty forgiving. Now right here around this edge, it doesn't seem to want to stick very well. So you can just pull back your fabric and add a little bit more Mod Podge. And just rub it. So now you just want to flip over your plate. As you can see, some of the decoupage ran up here on the sides. So I'm just going to take some paper towel and wipe that off. We don't want any on the front of the plate. And you can see right here, it's really not sticking. So just add some more Mod Podge. So now I'm just going to turn it back over. And keep rubbing. So now I'm just going to set this off to the side and I'm going to let this dry for one hour. For video purposes, I went ahead and made some swap outs. So I'm going to put this off to the side and I'll grab the other one that's ready to go. So here's one that I did yesterday. So I know it's good and dry. So now I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to trim my fabric. Now I just find it easier to take my rotary cutter here and I'm just going to cut around the plate. Now this is just our rough cut. When I turn this over you can see there's still extra fabric here. So now I'm going to take my sharp scissors and I'm going to cut off the rest of this. Now I like to hold my scissors at a kind of an angle here when I'm trimming and I'm going to trim right along the edge. Alright guys, so I have all my fabric trimmed up here as best I can. And if you do have a little rough edges, like this right here, don't worry about that. Because we can go ahead and hit that with sandpaper later on and make it nice and smooth. But if you want, you can just go back with your scissors and hack off any of those little bits. So now we just want to flip our plate upside down one more time and grab your Mod Podge. And now we're going to coat the entire back of this plate with a nice thin coat. Altogether, we're going to put about three coats on here. And between each coat, we're going to let it dry for an hour. Now this first coat on the fabric, it tends to suck up a lot of the Mod Podge. I was pretty surprised how much I had to use. So I kind of like to just glob it on here. And then I come back when I have the plate covered and brush out any of the brush marks. You don't want these thick blobs of the Mod Podge. You want a nice thin layer. So now I'm just going to carefully turn this around. It might get a little messy. And I'm going to wipe off any of this Mod Podge that got to the front. I'm going to turn it back over. Grab my brush and get rid of these fingerprints. So now I'm just going to set this off to the side and let it dry for an hour. So I just happen to have another swap out and this has one coat that's been dried and I did this one yesterday. And I think this one is my favorite plate. I just love all these woodland critters. So at this point you want to go around the edge and make sure that it's all glued down. You can see right here that it's not glued. And over here. So grab your brush, dab on some Mod Podge and just make sure your edges are down. I just kind of go around the plate like this and whatever peels up, Mod Podge it. Alright guys, so now that I have my edges all sealed down, 
Now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to do another thin layer. All right, so I have my second thin layer here, and a lot of this is the same process. So now I'm just going to lift this up, clean off any Mod Podge that spilled to the front, and I'm going to set it off to the side to dry for one hour. All right, guys, so here is my final swap out here. I have three coats of the Mod Podge on here, and I let this dry overnight. And as you can see, I fussy cutted this fabric, which happens to be one of my favorites also, so that the Christmas tree and the moose were right in the center of the plate. I think that looks so cute. So now I'm just going to grab some of the sandpaper here. You don't need very much. And because we use fabric here along the edges, it's kind of rough and bumpy. So if you take your sandpaper, I'm going to sand in one direction towards the glass side of the plate. Just like that. And I'm going to go all the way around the plate. You can kind of go back and forth like that also, but you just don't want to go towards the fabric because you have a chance of peeling that up. But if you do happen to peel up a little corner, just take some Mod Podge and glue it right back down. Alright, so I sandpapered all around the edges and it feels nice and smooth. So now I'm just going to take some paper towel here and just wipe off any of the dust. And now our Christmas cookie plate is complete. Now, of course, you don't have to just use Christmas fabric. You could make these any time of the year with any fabric you wanted. These would look cool at a children's birthday party where you could match the fabric to the theme of the party. Or if you just want a matching set of plates that match your kitchen. Now, this is a really fast and quick project. The only downtime is all the drying. And the 28-day cure to make these dishwasher safe on the top rack. Now, I don't think I'm necessarily going to put them in the dishwasher, but I like the idea of being able to clean these front and back. Now, I have a total of eight of these plates that I'll be making for friends and family, so I'll probably be decoupaging the rest of the day. I hope you give this quick project a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you next time.